Make some noise for Miss Nancy Loomis. Make some noise. Unfortunately, you know, this was, of course, billed as a Halloween reunion. Her castmates are not here, but she is so awesome. She didn't want to disappoint you guys. Wanted to come out and talk to the fans for a few minutes. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. Um, I know the Halloween questions will come eventually, but uh, I want to start talking about Assault on Priest 813, because you wore two hats when you were working on that movie. So any memories from that? I think it was three hats, actually. Oh, three hats. <laughs> I, I was a set decorator, property mistress, costume wardrobe mistress, designer, and, and then I acted in it. Wow. <laughs> I know. That is, is that the way it is when you're doing a John Carpenter movie in the 70s and 80s? Like, everyone does well, that? Well, that's the way it was for that film, because the budget was so low, and, and we all wanted to make the film. In my case, it was the first time I'd ever made a feature film. Um, and it was, a, it was an opportunity for everybody. So we just made it happen, whatever it took, you know? And we, yeah. a lot of us were just friends. And um, so that made it easier to be dedicated. Well, right? you made one of the all-time classics in that one. Thank um, you. What did you think of the remake? Have you seen the remake? No, I have not seen the remake. Oh, okay. I've not Very... seen any remakes, actually. Of... Yes, I don't like to watch remakes, so I have not seen it either. But I'm always curious when I get to talk to people who are in the original film if they've seen the remake. Once and again, in a blue moon, they might surprise you. Um, but I uh, also want to ask about The Fog, of course. Um, any memories of working on that? Well, The Fog is my favorite of the films that I made. Um, and that's because we shot it in, in Northern California, which is the most beautiful location to shoot a movie. And we had, we had the most money that we'd had up to that point to make a film, which was also was, was also important, you know, even though most of the money went to went to Panavision, because John is so crazy about Panavision cameras. But still, there was, it seemed positively leisurely. And I got to work with Janet Leigh. So what I remember is the thrill of working with her and getting to, getting to know her and, 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 you know, sort of being mentored by her. You know, she just was so gracious to me, and I'll never forget it. Oh, that's so cool. Well, that's another one of my all-time favorites right there as well. So, um, before we get to the Halloween stuff, uh, being the, the horror fan and the 80s TV fan that I am, I have to ask about working on the Twilight Zone series. <laughs> that was really fun. I, I wish that I could have done more, more of that. You know, it was when I, when I was working on, on, um, working on that show, is. I don't know, I just started to relax a little more about being in front of the camera because I was very camera shy. Really? Yeah, I was just used to being in the theater and rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing and performing over and over again. I was used to that model and that cycle of creation and being in front of the camera just really um, disturbed me that I couldn't rehearse in a way that I felt and I couldn't shoot in sequence. So uh, there were a lot of obstacles for me to overcome. I could see that. As <laughs> probably TV and indie film was probably not that different back then, right? It's probably a little bit more like doing a, a fast, you know, DIY budget well, movie. It, I don't know, maybe I just had enough experience or it was, I, I didn't feel as much pressure. I, I don't know what it was, but and maybe it was because I liked The Twilight Zone and it was a show that I had watched as a kid. That could have had something to do with it. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> I'm such a fan of that, so I but just I, had to yeah, ask. But yeah, I'm a major fan of Twilight Zone. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Do you have a favorite episode of the original series? Mm, I do, but I couldn't tell you the name of it. Okay, okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. We'll have to wonder. So, of course, you knew the Halloween questions were coming. I do want to give the audience a chance to jump in as well. Uh, while we're on the topic of Halloween, guys, is there anything you want to know about what I'm sure is everyone here's favorite horror film? And they get so shy and so quiet. Here we go. 
and I'll repeat it, so. So what he said was, uh, when Michael was stalking you and you're in the laundry room, it's one of his favorite scenes, and uh, he was wondering if you got at all scared or suspenseful while filming it. The short answer is no. (laughs) And that's because it, it was, it was, it was a really tiny, small space, and it was a funny scene, you know. And, and, the, and it's so awkward being stuck in this window and there was just so much about it that was funny. And, and all of the, the rest of the this, this stuff with Michael was shot later. And, and, uh, and then it's the soundtrack that really makes it scary. So while we were shooting it, it was just really funny and you know, and I'm in my underwear, and it's kind of embarrassing, you know, so I, I guess I was glad when it was over, but I, I really, I, you know, I, it was, it was, I felt like the center of attention, and I really didn't want to be, you know? Wow. But I, it was funny. Well, I can relate to that. Um, you know, riffing on that, one of my favorite aspects of Halloween is you hear these stories of great ingenuity on the set, like uh, it's Deborah Hill's hand instead of Michael's when he pulls the knife out and people are running around putting the lights from that shot into this part of the steady cam shot. So do you have any stories of, of that seeing like, wow, they're really making it work without the money on this? Any of that that you remember? Oh yeah, practically every day we were making something up and, and that's just the way movies go, I think. I think it has to do with limitations. You know, and, and what happens when artists are really limited um, in time and money and what is it that, that you bring because you don't have those things that you think you need, but you don't. And so your mind, your creative impulses go somewhere else and, you know, suddenly it, it, you find that... Your energy, I don't know, your, your, your energy starts to, to just cook in different ways that start to make, to make sense so that you can drive all the way to the Central Valley and find rotting pumpkins in April that will be good for like one shot, you know, and you got them for free and isn't it fabulous? <laughs> and you make them work, right? I love and, that. Oh, I love all those stories, like, and the fans well, do they're, too. They're all true, and, and it was part of the fun of making that film, is just creating these things that were really just put together with, you know, chewing gum and shoelaces, but it's scary, you know? Yeah. I mean, John put the money into the, once again, he put it into the camera, into Panavision, and yeah. that really helps give the what you're looking at a, a in the great Dean Cundy you know grounding and Dean Cundy too yeah, amazing but, but but it it somehow gives it the gravitas that it needs absolutely you know definitely um, any other Halloween questions or questions in general out there guys I know you get okay here we go again and I'll repeat it just for the audience on YouTube That's true. Sam Loomis yeah. is named after you. Wow. Well, there's a lot of characters in that movie that are named after friends of John because that's the way he wrote. He didn't waste time trying to think up a name. He just picked a name it was friends, right? Is that like Ben Tramer? Ben yeah. Tramer? Ben, ben Tramer is a good friend of his from school. Oh, Tommy man. Wallace was a good friend. Well, of course. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just that's just the way he... And he, he liked that. It kept, I'm sure it, it, it added a, a levity to what he was doing, right? Well, speaking of Tommy Wallace, of course, you guys did Halloween 3. Um, Halloween 3, any stories there? Um, I don't, 
I don't really remember any like fantastic stories from Halloween 3. I I was pretty preoccupied by the fact that I was I was expecting a baby. Oh, so well, I was pregnant would, yeah. while I was making that movie and I was just glad I got through it, you know. Is how I felt about <laughs> how I felt about it. But I know there were a lot of good stories that happened on that I'm on sure. that shoot, you know, and it was very exciting when the masks showed up. Those three masks and and it 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 you know, there was a lot, an awful lot of effort and care put into the script and the way that movie was shot and it was a disappointment that it didn't it didn't have the the immediate reception. It has come on big though lately. I'm sure you've amazing. noticed. It's yeah. incredible. It's like it aged like wine, but it took 30 years, you know. And then all of a sudden, like everybody loves Halloween it's Three, true. and it's awesome. It's yeah, a great and I, movie. I just think because it, it's in part because the whole genre is sort of wide open now. There's so many, you know, this this horror genre is just so big, and it's suddenly. It's okay to float that movie out away from what now is like this 20 movie franchise or something. Oh, yeah. So it's now it's looking like, oh, this was probably a good idea and maybe we should have continued to make other movies, other Halloween stories. I've always wondered in my mind, like, what else would we have gotten? Like, the 10-year-old in me is like, yeah, oh, I, I have, need to I know. Yeah, I have too. I, I have need too. to know. And maybe it will happen now. I mean, maybe it's... Even in a book, like, if, you know, Tommy and John wanted to write a book or something, like, please, take my money, you know? Um, you know but uh, maybe other Halloween stories will be, will, will emerge now, I, I, I think. It's possible. Uh, I would love nothing more than for that to happen. Like, just take my money, because that okay. would be so great. That would be so <laughs> great. Um, so do you want to give the audience a chance to jump back in there? Any other questions, Halloween or otherwise? Okay, well, one more I did want to ask about. Um, do you have a favorite of the Halloween sequels or a least favorite of the Halloween sequels? No. I think Halloween is my favorite. The original. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Well, <laughs> and there's a lot of them that I haven't seen, to, like, in all honesty, because I, I'm not a giant horror movie fan. I don't like being scared, <laughs> and so, you know, that's full disclosure. I I have a real trouble being scared, <laughs> so. I can understand that. But Halloween doesn't have a lot of blood and gore in it. It's scary. It's psychologically scary. You know, it's and, a perfect and I'm a, I'm a major Alfred Hitchcock fan. Oh, yeah. So for some reason, I can sit through an Alfred Hitchcock movie and not be scared, right? But, um, or I can, I, I'm not so uncomfortable as I am when I watch something like the remake of the first remake of Halloween was like, oh my God. I I, yeah. It's that style. That, it's the totally style of very filmmaking. Opposite. It's, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, viol, violence, you know, really graphic violence, it, it, it's, it's very hard, I think, to pull off successfully. I agree. Because you know, you're agree. really invading spectator space and yeah. you're really trying to send a lot of triggers out there. And there's a fine line between scaring people and making them uncomfortable, you know? Just making them sick or uncomfortable. Like, that's different. That doesn't always scare people. It's tricky to know where that line is, I think. Yeah, and I don't know. And, well, it's, it's also, I think, has to do with what, what sort of messages you're, you're sending. And sometimes those messages need to be heard and people need to be made uncomfortable. That's true. You know, oh, yeah. There, sure. and, and that has real value. And yeah. other times, it, but I guess, it's, I guess that's all I really can say about it. Because no, I, 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 don't, I, don't I, I don't feel like I'm an expert in the horror movie genre. Well, I think it's very well said. I think your point, and I agree with it, definitely. Um, so one more before I let you go, because we have some, some new arrivals here. Um, 
Tony Moran has often said in quite a humbling way that he really didn't think the movie was going to be anything. He thought Halloween, what a joke. Babysitter murders, what a joke. Blah, blah, blah. You know, what is this jo You know, and he's like, boy, was I wrong. So I was wondering what expectation level that you had for the film, for the first Halloween. Well, the first time I saw the rough cut before the soundtrack, I thought, eh, babysitters, no. I mean, this movie is not flying. It's too bad. You know, and then I went to the screening w w with the soundtrack, and I was just scared out of my seat. I couldn't believe it, and I thought, "Oh my God, this is this movie is really, really scary." And if people like scary movies, I think they're going to like it. Um, but you know, it, it it wasn't it wasn't really till much, much later, until the rise of the internet, I think. I mean, I mean, the movie did become sort of an underground cult film, but not until the rise of the internet in the 90s did, did this whole idea of, of the horror genre just sort of look to Halloween as a sign signal film, right? It's the seed that planted a genre, you know? Yeah. And, and so it was at that point that I watched the movie again, you know, <laughs> after I went to my first horror convention, which was in Cherry Hill. Oh, wow. In, I don't know when, when was that, 2006 or something? Oh, wow. But, yeah, and, and then I realized, wow, there's so many fans of this movie, I should really pay attention, well. you know, because my life had taken such a different direction when I, I stopped acting and I stop performing and I, I went in a whole other, you know, professional path. But I, I definitely am not surprised looking, looking at the film now of why it's so um, valued in, you know. Well, there are so many Halloween fans here and there are so many Nancy Lewis fans here. So thank you so much for taking the time. Guys, be sure to come to Nancy's table, get some pictures, get some autographs. I know she's got a lot more stories to tell you. Oh, do we have one here? Okay. I'll repeat. about assault on precinct 13. <laughs> I would agree. You know, you know what I remember is driving, this, this was like what, 1977 or something? I, I can't, 76? I don't know, Six. something. Right. Anyway, I remember we needed a Coke machine, an old fashioned Coca-Cola machine, right? Wow. And I remember driving way down into in the industrial part of LA where I'd never been. And of course, you didn't have a GPS, you had a map, like, and, and going to some warehouse where we'd gotten permission to rent this Coca-Cola machine and to use the Coca-Cola trademark. And, and getting this machine and somehow this was like the most exciting thing that the that the crew that the crew had like or at least for me that that we had managed to pull off was okay we got a coke machine it's so cool and we got it for free which is even better you know and so every day was like that it was like the whole story with halloween ex except it was even more intense how can we make this set you know, we had to build this set with no money and make it look, make it, build it so that you could shoot it with a Panavision camera, because that was like the star of the show, was the Panavision camera, and make it look like the Alamo. Because right? originally this film was called the Alamo, and, and, oh yeah, yeah, that's a whole other story, which you should ask John Carpenter about, but, you know, he, 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 Somehow it turned into assault on precinct 13, and 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 um, yeah.
Wow, that's but amazing. he still wanted that Western feel because he was such a big fan of John Ford and Howard Hawks, you know, and he wanted that kind of c cinema gravitas that, that, you know, that monolithic 50s look that, that yeah. John Wayne, you always saw in those John Wayne movies. And so we designed this set that had this Western kind of feel to it. Mission, but, mission accomplished there. Uh, mission accomplished completely. Um, at any rate, one last chance before we uh, let Nancy get back to her table, guys. Any other questions? All right, well, definitely be sure to stop by her table, get pictures, get autographs. I know she's got more stories. Put your hands together and make some noise for Miss Nancy Loomis. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And thank you, Christopher. This is Ray Santiago, and you're watching Fandom Spotlight. Please watch, like, and subscribe, or else we'll find you and you'll die.